Hi, it's uh, Bob Parker and I'm uh, happy to be here at the end of October. I wanted to uh, give subscribers a heads up on the next issue. Uh, I also wanted to, to uh, introduce uh, the third special guest we've had uh, during these, uh, these video, uh, unscripted videos, uh, live and uncensored. And today we have uh, Eileen. Uh, she spells her name E-Y-E hyphen L-E-A-N. And uh, she's, uh, she doesn't say a whole lot, uh, uh, but, uh, but I've been told she only spooks when spoken to. So, uh, but with that in mind, uh, I hope you're not too grossed out by her, but she's been around for a long time and uh, I just uh, dug her up the other day. So, uh, first of all, I want to talk about issue 209. Believe it or not, I can't believe uh, it's 35 plus years now. Uh, it's a, uh, pardon the pun here, but it's a monster issue, uh, like most of the other ones. Uh, I have the biggest report we've ever done in the history of the Wine Advocate on Napa Valley. Uh, profiling the 2010, 11, 12, and looking back at some of the 2009s that I didn't get a chance to taste. Uh, there, there are really two great vintages in there, 2010 and 2012, and of course if you've read any of the uh, online accounts, 2013 is pretty much uh, already harvested in the cellars and uh, most growers are probably uh, as, as pleased with that or more so than 2012. Uh, so, uh, and they're both abundant years, which is good because uh, 2009, 2010, 2011 were smaller crops. They were very late crops, the very cool years. Uh, with 2011 the most uh, complicated because of rain and fog and uh, rot, rot uh, forming in some of the valley vineyards. But there's some great wines in 2011 and that's why uh, it's a sort of a nightmare for consumers and wine critics but uh, the, you can find some spectacular wines. So I guess she's not going to say anything about the, uh, this monster report. Uh, and uh, uh, But uh, uh, you don't want to make any bones about it at all? I guess not.